What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the first video of my new series. Horribly cliche. From witches to the stitches, from those screams to the dreams, from the horribly campy to the shrimp scampy. We're gonna watch a lot of movies. I wanted to start the series with a movie that in my mind is kind of a masterclass on the cliches of horror movies. It's a little self-aware, kind of annoying at times, but I still think it's important to start with the 1996 Wes Craven film, Scream. Who is this? Mm, who are you trying to reach? What number is this? What number are you trying to reach? I don't know. Nope, perfectly normal conversation here. His name wouldn't be Steve, would it? The Dread Pirate Steve being no man's dead. The popcorn drew. Drew, your house is gonna smell like burnt popcorn for so long. Alright, this is a great horror movie cliche. It's when the villain, who's normally very good at killing things, stalking things, fighting things, whatever it is, just all of a sudden becomes super weak when fighting a protagonist of the story. Now, spoiler alert, Drew doesn't make it out alive from this scene. But nonetheless, he headbutts through a pane of glass and then gets defeated by a phone. Okay, moving on. Don't even bother now. It's already burnt. This also leads to two huge horror movie cliches. The dial tone. And the screaming woman. We're introduced to our main character, Sidney Prescott, and we're introduced to the boy who doesn't know how to approach people, <laughs> Billy Loomis. My flight leaves first thing in the morning. Now they're... Write down another cliche, the parents are conveniently out of town. It had been a while since I've seen this movie, but I completely forgot the Fonz was in it. Inner Deputy Dewey, played by David Arquette. I'm a huge David Arquette fan, and my only issue with this role is that Dave Sheridan did such a good spoof of it as Doofy in the Scary Movie franchise that I can't think of this character without seeing... I got poopy. Did you just say that you, uh, you went poopy? Yeah, it was good. Mm. I know it's not fair because Scary Movie came out after, obviously, but still. That's a totally normal thing for principals to do. No. No, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. A few moments later. I found it. Thank you, Doofy. Special Officer Doofy today, Sin. Quick catch-up. Cops think they have enough evidence to put Billy into jail, to which he says, Doff, I didn't do it. And then we get my favorite line in the whole movie. Sydney! Sydney! I completely forgot to introduce her earlier, so I'll introduce her now. Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers. Jesus, the camera, hurry! My name isn't Jesus. Don't worry, sit in school, you'll be safe here. Wow, this really is the 90s. I am sorry if my traumatized life is an inconvenience to you and your perfect existence. What? Wouldn't, nobody said that. Say it. You don't know how to switch off. Stupid. Okay, this is a great time to talk about the rule of thirds in horror movies. Now, this isn't an official rule, I would say, but fans of horror should know a general sense of what this is. Basically, scares come in three. So if she looks under the stall once, nothing, twice, nothing. The third time we see under the stalls is when something's going to happen. Some horror movies are aware of this, and they try to push it to maybe the fourth time it happens, or sometimes even the second time it happens. But once you know this rule, you can start looking for it. Let's take one more example from the movie The Unborn. While not a great horror movie, it follows the rule of thirds to a T. She interacts with the medicine cabinet once. She then goes to leave and hears a sound. She interacts with the medicine cabinet a second time. 
and it's just a medicine cabinet. Nothing suspicious. We hear the sound again. She interacts with the medicine cabinet a third time, and there's our monster. All right, let's get back to Henry Winkler being a goofball. <coughs> and our second example of the rule of thirds in our own movie. Yes? Knock once, nobody there. Hello? Knock twice, nobody there. Damn little shits. Would you call me? For those of you who don't know, this is Wes Craven. Wes Craven, as you know, is the director of the Scream movies as well as the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. All right, moving on. So at this point, our rule of threes, we're at two door interactions. He's about to have his third door interaction, and can you guess what's behind door number three? There's a formula to it, a very simple formula. Cut to later, despite there being a curfew and everybody seeming to get murdered, why not throw a house party? Okay, let's see. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. <sighs> oh, look at me. I'm all dead. I'm a gross, scary, severed head. There she is. No, I haven't seen her. <laughs> okay, we can all agree that he's just a dick at this point, I think. Don't you know the rules? What rules? You don't... Okay, here we go. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Number one, you can never have sex. Number two, you can never drink or do drugs. The sin factor. And number three, never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I was just thinking if it were you, it would be a very clever way to throw me off track. You know, using your one phone call to call me so that I wouldn't think it was you. That's all. Sydney! Sydney! Help me, somebody! Good. We can talk about cliches again. Shouting for help when clearly nobody's going to hear you. Oh, there he is. I love that he basically narrates his own murder. Behind you. Behind you. Oh, except he doesn't get murdered. Meanwhile, Sydney has also found herself inside of a vehicle. We learn how car doors open from the bottom of the car, apparently. Anthony Perkins, psycho. Corn syrup. Same stuff they use for pig's blood and carry. Like, you know, forks are from the Roman times, and they would sculpt them out of bark. You gave it up. Now you're no longer a virgin. Now you gotta die. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. Everybody dies but us. I think I'm dying here, man. One of the most, if not the most common horror movie cliche is the unkillable killer. In one scene, he's bleeding out, he's presumed dead, and the next scene, he has enough strength to somehow almost kill the protagonist yet again. But a TV to the head should do the trick. Dude, someone seriously needs to punch you in the face. Thank you! This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Not in my movie. Okay, there is a minute and 20 seconds left in this movie. This has to be the last self-aware quote. Like the plot of some scary movie. Yeah, snuck one more in at the end there. See what they did? We did it, everybody. We just watched Scream. Kinda. Now, before we wrap up, I just want to give a huge shout-out to all of our sponsors. We don't have any. But seriously, thank you for watching this. I know horror isn't everybody's bag but hopefully this series can make horror movies enjoyable for non-horror fans. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do, and as always, stay happy, stay healthy.